Why don't you just take a seat for one minute wherever you are, just for a moment. Well, I am so honoured to be here. Are you enjoying the concert so far? I can't hear you. I think you are. You're singing like you are. My name is Christine Kane, and it is such a privilege to be with you tonight. I, together with my husband, Nick, we oversee an organisation called the A21 Campaign where we help to rescue the victims of human trafficking around the world. You know, I was born in Sydney, Australia. Has anyone heard of Australia? Does anyone want to go to Australia? Everyone say, good day, mate. Now you sound like Australians and I invite you all to my house when you come. Well, I was born in Sydney, Australia, the daughter of Greek immigrants. I want to tell you a story what happened to me when I was 33 years old. When I was 33 years old, my brother George, who was 35, he called me on the phone and he said to me, Christine, I just received a letter and the letter says that I have been adopted. Now when my brother said this, I was in shock. He was 35 years old, I was 33 years old. And I thought that he was joking with me. And so I started laughing. And I said, they made a mistake. George, call the department that sent you the letter and tell them they made a mistake. So he called them and maybe about five minutes later, he called me back on the telephone. And he said, Christine, it's true. They told me the name of my biological mother, my biological father. They told me when I was born, when I was immunized, where I went to school. They have a whole file of my life. And he was weeping. And he said, I'm gonna go and talk to mum about this. Now, my father had died when I was 19. So my mother was home alone. And I knew that if my brother went to give her this news, it may shock her. So I got into the car and I drove to my mother's house because I'm thinking he's, she's going to get so shocked about this news. So I walked into my mother's house at the moment that my brother was giving my mother this piece of paper from the government. And the paper said, adopted. As soon as my mother took the paper, my mother started crying and she said, George, I'm so sorry. The reason I never told you was because in Australia, 35 years before, all of the adoption laws, they were closed adoption. And so nobody knew that they were adopted. And we never thought you would find out. And before, just before your father died, I promised him that I would never tell you. So you could imagine how sad my brother was. My brother was crying. My mother was crying. The dog was crying. Everyone was crying. I didn't know what to do. And being a good Greek girl, we believe that food is the answer to everything. So I thought, I'm going to go to the kitchen. I'm going to make some baklava. I'm going to make some hummus and pita bread and make food for everyone and make them happy. So I went to the kitchen. My mother walked into the kitchen after me. And she said to me these words. Christina, since we are telling the truth today, do you want to know the whole truth? Yeah, you're very smart here in Qatar. <laughs> and I turned around to my mother and I said, I've been adopted too. And my mother started crying and she said, yes. I had no idea. I was 33 years old and I had no idea. And she said, Christine, I'm sorry we never told you, but we never thought you would find out. And as I stood there to find out the news that I was not who I thought I was. And then they sent me the documents about my birth. You know how strange it is at 33 to receive documents? To receive a birth certificate when you thought you had a birth certificate and it's a different birth certificate. And it's a different social worker report. And when I received the birth certificate, the birth certificate simply said, child's name unnamed. That was the word that was typed in, unnamed. And then it had a number, number 2508 of 1966. So that tells you how old I am. I'm 53. 
how many people were not born in 1966? Most of the arena, you were not alive in 1966. But it said number 2508 of 1966, unnamed. And then the report from the hospital said that I was unwanted. I was left in the hospital. I don't know who my biological mother is. I do not know who my biological father is. And the document said that I was unwanted. And so I was holding two pieces of paper. One said unnamed. The other one said unwanted. It is shocking to find out you are not who you thought you were at 33 years old. And I had grown, grown up in a very broken family. And so it would be just like God to take a young woman that was left abandoned in a hospital, that was adopted, that was abused, that was rejected, that was full of shame, that was full of guilt, that was full of condemnation, a young woman that should have had no purpose. Not only did He rescue me, but now He uses me to open the doors and rescue those that are still enslaved, that are still in pain, that are still in fear. And this is why we started Propel, because I want you all to know that your past does not have to define your future. You are full of potential. You are full of purpose. You are full of destiny. And your life can be used to make a difference. You don't have to limit yourself by what other people have said about you. Some people may have said you're dumb, you're stupid, you're not bright, you'll never amount to anything. Oftentimes in society, in our lives, people tell us you're not enough, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not talented enough, you don't have the right background, you're not from the right heritage, but I've got good news for you. You are a child of God created in the image of God. You are more than enough in Him. In Him. So through the work we do around the world, people are rescued and they're given a second chance, which is the message that we have. That there is always hope beyond your past. That you don't have to live in shame or guilt or condemnation. You don't have to live full of bitterness or unforgiveness. You don't have to be defined by what someone else has said about you. But you can find hope and purpose in life. And in and through a relationship about that great name, Jesus, that we're singing about today, you can help other people to find a future and to find hope and to find life and to find liberty and to find freedom and to find a life beyond your past. There is hope. I want you to know I flew across the world because I believe that on the inside of you there is hope, there is purpose, there is potential, there is power. You can make a difference in your generation. You can be used to make a difference. So if my life can encourage you in any way, a girl that was left in a hospital in Sydney, Australia, unnamed and unwanted and unqualified. That's what they said about me. On the 23rd of March, 1993, still many of you were not even born then. That's how old I am. A professor from the university said, you are not qualified to do the work that you do. But here I am, 26 years later, after the expert said that you cannot run an NGO, you cannot help people in that area because you are not qualified. This is what I've discovered. Yeah. He qualifies and he will give you a life beyond your past, into your future and into your destiny. So I want to speak to the potential on the inside of you. I want to speak to the purpose on the inside you to know there is so much more for you ahead and the same God that did it for me he can do it for you Jesus Christ can make a difference in your life in Jesus name he can make a difference in your life so I want you to stand to your feet and we're going to continue to sing and we're going to continue to declare the greatness of our God because there is so much more on the inside of you